Good Wednesday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel. It talks about all my cars and trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, dogs, attitudes, addictions. Good morning there. Thanks for tuning my channel this freezing butt Wednesday morning. Woo! It's cold. I mean, it's cold. It's just that dry cold, but hey, appreciate everybody that's watched my channel and uh, tunes in to hear me gab along and share my views and ideas and thoughts and craziness, and uh, hopefully that relates to you, right? <laughs> so, wow, here it is Wednesday. The wife, the wife's back. The, the driveway's back. If you, if you look at the uh, my driveway, it's all packed in again. The kid likes to park everything over here, and oh my goodness gracious, what's just a beautiful, beautiful type of winter day that you think the snow is around the corner and if you're just a kid you think the fun is about to happen because if you're a kid and it snows out what do you want to do besides make snowballs snowmans sledding skiing snowboarding I mean oh my gosh growing up was that one of the best things me growing up of going skiing it was so much fun and uh, it's tis the season where the snow is here upon us. Not so much here, but other parts of the country. But you're hearing the word fun. And I thought to myself, wow. We haven't had the fun conversation. I think we have a lot of fun conversations. But we haven't had the noun fun uh, in our um, morning conversation. So there it is. I thought to myself, we talked about the uh, positions on Monday. We talked about critical elements uh, yesterday, Tuesday, and today... On Wednesday, let's talk about fun. And I thought, wow, that's such a broad meaning in so many things. But I think it directly hits right back to these cars and trucks and motorcycles and vehicles that I own and you own. And it really comes down to what drives you to buy something because it obviously had to have some fun in uh, what you own. Let's get the dogs in. Come on, Pops. Hey, come on, Ginger, Scout. Let's get these guys in because uh get crazy. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Who would have ever imagined my coyote sticker matches my Brembo painted brakes? How about that, huh? Pretty cool, right? And let's get inside the dark horse. It's dark. We've got a dark horse here. Years ago, people would make dark horse. You got a horse? Yeah, I got a horse. No, I don't have a horse. You got a car that Mustang Ford decided to name Dark. Dark Horse. Where'd that come from, right? What's this, you know, I should look that up. What's the story of Dark Horse? You know, what does that, what does that mean? And, uh, boy, it's so cold this morning. I'm going to get upstairs in my office. I'm going to get the heat going because uh, it's cold. <clears throat> I just think that, uh, I don't think I'm getting a cold. Oh, did I leave the heat on last night? Oh, no, it turns on automatically, I think. Yeah, see, turns on so it doesn't freeze. So look at that there. It just comes automatic. I had to bring in my power washers so I don't ruin the pumps. But uh, yeah, you know, for those who come to my office, you never see me walk downstairs, do you? How about that? Turn the light on. You don't see the artwork as much. Downstairs, there's us boating. There's like 2017 or 18 down there outside of... Uh, that clear water, whatever you call it, poor carpet. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, here we are. It's ongoing. How do I take my cars to entertain those that watch my channel? And wow, I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers. It's like I jinxed myself because I'm like at 99, you know, 98, and that's at 99.99. And so, do I hit 10k? I really thought yesterday. I would hit 10,000 subscribers. I really did. But it's just time to kind of peter out. So I think I jinxed myself, but whatever. Uh, does that make the difference of me having fun? And I just think that's what's so, uh, it's so important in our life. I mean, I just can't emphasize enough. I think that so many would agree that you have to have fun in your life. And sadly, there's so many people out there who just seem not to want to have fun in their life. What is that all about? Very sad in my views, that so many people have so much around them that they could do and have fun, and they don't. They don't. So, uh, hey, let's keep the Mustang going, because Jay Williams, one of my subscribers, he's a great guy that 
weighs in his views and ideas, and he, and he hit it on the head. He so said from my critical uh, conversation yesterday morning that he feels that this here was the mistake. He feels like the dark horse is really a mistake. He feels like this is the winner. He feels like bang for the buck, money, what I did with this car, that was the best thing I could have done, okay, money-wise, because what's the odds of me tracking this car? Yeah, most likely not. If there was a track nearby, there's absolutely I'd try to track the car, but nah, turns into the project to do the, uh, I'm not talking about doing a quarter mile, I'm talking about going around the racetrack and utilizing the components. So his position was, yeah, Mr. Iceman, this is a waste of money. And in so many ways, I don't disagree because it's more cars than I'll ever use. But for who I am in life, I always have to have the latest, greatest, coolest thing on the block, right? That's just who I am. Just like the Hellcat Red Eyes. Do I take it to the track and do burnouts and quarter miles? I don't. I don't. So, you know, it's just always about me wanting to feel like, oh, I've got the latest, greatest, baddest ass car. That's just who I am. You know, and instead, and some people be like, oh, you know, you just waste your money, waste your money, da 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 da. Little, yeah, okay, well, it's my money. I mean, are you are you actually paying my bills? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, does it really matter? I mean, I just look at life and think, you know, I could have bought the McMansion house. I could, I could live, I could sell all my cars and toys, and the property, and I could then show you a video of me being in this ten thousand square foot home that's for the most part empty. <laughs> I mean, I can furnish it to the hilt. And I can just basically use my two rooms out of the house most of the time, which is probably going to be the bedroom and the kitchen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could do that. But that isn't fun. That's not fun to me. I'm sorry. I don't have any fun. I've had so much fun living here on my property. I've taken it from where it was to where it is today. I mean, I've put a lot of money and a lot of time in this property. I just love my property. Um, I had the chance to own that property up there. We realize or not. My mother and father and I used to own that home up on the hill. Um, and I used to take care of it and help pay for it and make it all work. Uh, I didn't want that house. That's a beautiful house. But I just didn't want the house. So we made the decision years ago to sell that house. And then I was able to actually go do things after close to uh, 11 years of living on this property. And, you know, I took care of both properties for so many years. I mean, you have no idea. My dad would come up and he would help as well, but then he wasn't here year round. So many, many summers, many, many springs, many, many falls that I just lived on tractors and weed whackers. And I mean, you just have no idea. Uh, eventually it, was, it wasn't fun anymore. And I came to closure. I'd rather just have my house and I'd rather be able to go do things. I'd rather just have a bunch more cars instead of having another damn house take care of. That's a $5,000 a month obligation up there back in the day. No lie. So, back here to the whole point is, yeah, right, I take my monies and I decide to put them into the cars. I just really, you know, yeah, should I be buying some property? I don't disagree. But that fun factor petered out um, when the real estate market went crazy. I was getting ready to buy some property in Tennessee or Florida, but now the, the prices are so stupid, I'm just sitting it out. How long, as far as it lasts? I have no idea. But anyways, back to Mr. Jay Williams. He says that for me, modding this Mustang GT, uh, he feels like this is so much the better package car. And I think that's great because if you watch my channel, I would tell anybody that's on more of the uh, really manager cents and dollars, you just already said cents and dollars, this is the car. You're going to be so happy in this car. Um, you know, is there that radical difference from that car to this car when I drive it? Uh, per se, there's not. I mean, I can feel it. In the transmission, um, this thing here for sure has more of an exhaust note. Um, this here, you can feel the bigger tires and wheels, which is pretty cool. I know for a fact that the higher speeds, I would feel the back end of this uh, gurney flap that would be kind of pushing this car down the back end. So weird a dream. Have you ever had those dreams? What the heck was this about? I literally had a dream before I woke up that this car, I was out in this car in the snow. <laughs> I was out in this car in the snow with some friends, and I'm driving down these residential streets, and this thing isn't going to get home. If you look at this tire here, see this tire? That tire, this thing is like right now like a Lego block. That, I mean, it's so incredible how many people, it's, it's an argument. I've talked about it a gazillion times. When you go to the door jam of this car, I've showed you a gazillion times. 
it shows you, it tells you that it's not uh, of the wisest things to do uh, to drive your car to have fun in when the temperature is like 47, what does it say there? 45 degrees or below. So this Ford company knows that when they put these high performance tires in these cars, these don't, aren't really meant for cold weather driving. And when you get to really the 20 degree, the teens, you're foolish. You will crack the tires. So you're like, oh, you're so full of baloney. I'm not. I know for a fact that Tyson's Corner Chevrolet 20 years ago, when they brought out the brand new C6, C6, Z06, I know for a fact, an extremely cold morning, the delivery driver showed up to Coons Chevrolet with a whole load of Z06s and unloaded them. The tires were ruined. <laughs> they had to buy all new tires for all those Z06 Corvettes because you cracked the compound. But the thing is, an average person, do you really have the eye to know that you cracked the compound in your tire? Do you really have that technology? Do you have that you know experience? The whole point is, I like anybody else here, when you get a brand new car, you wanna go drive it. Would I love to drive this car today? Sure, I'd love to go take it to get the windows tinted. Can't, it's too cold, it's gonna be 30s today. I'd be an idiot and a fool to do it. Most of you are like, eh, it ain't gonna be that much of a difference of deal. Eh, you know what? Um, I can be patient, I can wait another day. It's gonna be back in the 40s tomorrow, next week, whatever, so let it go. But here's the point of the conversation, the fun conversation. What drives us to you know, finally kind of come to closure of what makes something fun that you wanna buy it? And that's the whole gig at the car dealership. Who doesn't go to a car dealership? And the number one thing a car salesperson wants you to do is to test drive the car. I mean, sincerely. <laughs> Um, they know once you test drive that car, if that car gives you any fun factor, then the, then the deal is going, right? And that's just so crazy. That Nissan Z, I really wanted that Nissan Z. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get the Nissan Z. I still could get it, but it's just too much money out of pocket to make any sense. Um, but I really wanted that car. But the thing is, I really wanted to drive that car. And I couldn't. They won't let you do it. It's so bad. And the downside is for the Nissan product, for the so-called Z Fun experience, um, they're not building these things by any means of any, you know, any great quantity. So these dealerships can always look at you and go, hey, man, there's only a stuck for you around. There's no way you're driving this car because nobody's going to buy this car if you drive it, Iceman, because we'll have 12 miles on it instead of six miles on it, you know? So that's, and to me, it's like, but this is no rare, this is not some just incredibly sought off your car. It's obvious. Nobody's buying these things. Nobody's buying the gig. So uh, so what, what drives you as an individual to think what makes a car fun? I mean, you know as well as I do, we've got a challenge. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, we have a challenge. We have a so-called government and green agenda people trying to convince people that these electric vehicles are fun. They're fun vehicles. And I will say honestly that they are. I mean, the, the Mustang Mach-E... It's a fun car to drive. It really is glued to the road. It feels like it has a really performance-oriented type of drive to it. But at the same time, um, without the engine noise and all the other things that are kind of go hand-in-hand -hand with it, the fun kind of dissipates. Um, this car kind of does this going down the road. It does a... I don't know what it is, but if you watch these cars, it does. it's because of this big battery pack. So... It's obvious more than ever. I mean, get this. Um, the big three, or big two, are now writing to Joe Biden a personal letter saying this EV agenda thing you got going on, the, the, the consumers aren't getting it. They don't, they don't want it. They're not having fun. Your idea of fun isn't translating to us having fun at our car dealerships. Because we can't sell these things, Mr. Joe Biden. I mean, this is sincere. I'm sincere. I heard you saw yesterday on the news that apparently they're writing the administration a letter saying this force the EV agenda down the consumer's throat. Nobody's having fun with your idea, Mr. Joe Biden. And we've got a problem, Mr. Joe Biden. We've got these electric cars um, mating with each other and duplicating themselves like never seen. And we can't get rid of them. What are we going to do with them, Mr. Joe Biden? Are you going to write us that uh, IRA, Inflation Reduction Act? Are you going to send us a big old check for billions of dollars 
to be able to uh, put on our books to to not take these losses on these vehicles it's huge yes so where's the fun right so that's what's really um as most people know it's a separation of the ev vehicle icy vehicle but i can promise you a tesla owner will say these teslas are so much fun i can promise you uh, an electric vehicle person owns a mustang mach -E, say these vehicles are so much fun okay i don't disagree they're fun cars you have something that's a sweet spot in how you evaluate your vehicle to be fun i think this ford power boost is an extremely fun vehicle and it has so many check marks that you can go through the list of the fun and the enjoyment the practicality so many things that that's a great package when it comes to ford lightning truck over here it's much more challenging to keep the fun going because of the challenges of so many things that go with it that can take you away from uh, being able to check off all the fun. Um, you go over here to the, the Jeep Gladiator. Ah, you know, I've had mixed feelings because of the solid front axle. Um, the, the weaker V6 uh, motor in it. But overall, it's just a really fun vehicle per se. But every vehicle, as I've said many times, has its challenges. And that's what happens. I start to see the imperfections of these vehicles. And then I'm like, yeah, I have my fun with it. I want to move on. Um, here we got the Dodge Charger. Yesterday, I think it said Supercharger. Dodge Charger, Super B. Uh, Plum Crazy. That thing is so much fun. What is it about this car? Is it the tires and wheels? Um, now they put a nicer exhaust in it. The four-door, very um, comfortable uh, adaptive cruise control. The seating is just so, uh, you know, plush as far as you're just very comfortable in this car. And it's fast. And it has that fun factor of when you get into it, you can go down the road and get that good old note out of it. And it's just, it's a great handling car. It just is a huge fun factor. The Ford Tremor truck with the Carly package. I love this truck because it's got that big ass, big, you know, it just has that beefy look to it. The suspension really feels good. The, the power, the tires and wheels. I mean, it just gives that whole, you know, I got a big truck. It's all about, hey, I got the big truck. Look at me, right? The Ford Mustang, I've had so many of these. These are fun, but I get my fun out of these things and I get rid of them. Why is that, right? Why have I had so many Mustangs in such a short period of time? Cold out here. I mean, it's cold. The Ford race truck. Now, this truck right here, this is so much fun because it's been modded and it's the exhaust note i mean this thing has an exhaust note on it that is so much fun and just to profile the truck it isn't a dime a dozen and the truck uh, just you drive down the road I means a little choppy it'll beat you up can't get over how the door on this truck is so misaligned isn't that something how do we fix that you can take it to like a body shop guy and say hey how, what's your trick to getting that door it doesn't look like it's closed. I mean, part of me is like the truck isn't even closed right there. But anyways, you know, there's there's that two-seat, two-door. It just has a lot of character to it that makes it fun. You know, what drove me to buy this thing? <laughs> I mean, why to buy the GT Mustang when it is something how everything played out so opposite what I ever would have thought of when I ordered my Ember Blue uh, Metallic Dark Horse that ended up not even being my car. I mean, it's a crazy to think that um, so what somebody else ordered, you know, what somebody else ordered that they thought that'd be their fun in their life didn't happen. Uh, somebody that ordered this that thought this would be their fun in their life, it didn't happen. But what's interesting is I created the fun for the guy that bought my Ember Blue Dark Horse Mustang. And, and in so many ways, I feel like I did make the right decision for Mr. Jay Williams, not arguing, but I will say this much. I think if I would have bought that Ember Blue um non dark horse handling package i think i would have made a huge mistake because that car borderline looks exactly like that car in a different color this definitely has more bit of the, you know that that flair to it and if the dark handling package i think that saved me because so many people like these performance or remote things um here's the fun factor here's what's going on it's just manual transmission okay which the manual transmission as we know, has been removed from so many vehicles, so many cars. That was a big gripe of the GT500 that you wouldn't have any fun because they didn't allow for the manual transmission. They put a seven-speed DCT in it. Anybody remember that? Um, a lot of the Hellcat people were very disappointed that when you buy the red-eye package, 
you can't get a, uh, a manual transmission. You can only get an automatic. And so many people love the manual tr transmission, even though we all know that the manual transmission is not going to beat today's 10-speed auto. <laughs> the manual transmission is not going to beat the 7-speed direct uh, dual-clutch transmission of GT500. You can't shift fast enough. You go back 30, 40 years ago, the manual transmission was you better driving it than the car could drive and shift. Those days are gone. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. The Challenger. So now the, the Scat Pack and the non-red eye, you can get a manual. The Charger, you're never able to get a manual. Uh, but then during the pandemic, a lot of people lost that capability to get a manual at all. But we all know the manual is such a uh, small percentage of the sales in the country, more so in Europe, than here. They've taken it away in most of the cars. That's what's pretty neat about that Nissan Z. That takes me back to my true days of me getting going in life, and I was so much fun. That's what I really wanted that Nissan Z, was for me to be able to take that car, have that experience, kind of reflect of me being just a kid again of 16 years old, just getting going in my driving and stick shift in a car. And that was just so much fun. Um, you go down there, I, the, the Ford Bronco Raptor, I've talked about that thing so much. Yeah, that thing's just a very fun, versatile vehicle. So now we go from the cars and you know, what makes the motorcycles? And here's what's really interesting. So Indian is reaching out to me. Yeah, Indian has reached out to me again. I spoke to them in great depth yesterday. So let me get my coffee here. So here's the thing, Indian, I'm trying to figure this out now. Got my Indian, paraphernalia on as usual. My, it's my only real gear I have. I don't really have the Honda, or the Honda, the Harley stuff. So anyways, the uh, Indian Pursuit, with, it's the Indian Challenger with, a, with a, a trunk on it and lowers, okay? So Indian, I think Indian has a third party involved in this now. From the way this gentleman talked to me, I think Indian has a whole separate division, I guess to protect itself or something, where the, the process of them buying back that Indian Pursuit is actually a little bit of, of a project <laughs> to get that to all kind of come to an end. But apparently, I think a third party is actually involved in taking the motorcycle back. That actually buys the motorcycle back. So I don't think actually Indian corporate buys it back. I think they have a subsidiary or they have a separate structured company to deal with the unhappy uh, customers that have issues with Indians. And it's nothing uncommon, I think, in any broad aspect of the industry. I mean, think about Harley Davidson. How many people have been unhappy with their Harley Davidson? You can go through the list. Anyways, the whole point is. I said to the guy, I said, you know, the new Indian Challenger Elite is a really cool looking bike. For 2024, I said, I don't think that bike will come available until next year, but would you be able to maybe get me one of those? And this is where I kind of figured out this guy isn't really Indian corporate because he said he's going to have to reach out to this person and that person. Then he's going to have to reach out to maybe some dealers. So then I was kind of like, okay, this is now making more sense. This guy's a third party guy trying to bring this resolution to an end. And so, anyways, I thought, hey, you know, what about that idea? What about a, a, a Roadmaster, um, original, the bat wing, or that Indian fairing that's a much bigger thing? So I told him, I said, I don't know. I'm going to have some time to think about it. And we have to go through all the proper steps and procedures regardless. It just comes down to if they want to, uh, you know, find me a different bike. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, here's the danger. I could take this Indian Challenger right here, to the Nissan dealership, and I could trade it in, and I'm they would take it, and I would own that Nissan Z because I, I, you know, I about borderline, I just about own this motorcycle, so I would have a ton of money to buy that Nissan Z. Yeah, do I do it? I don't know. If the guys called me and said that the 2024 Elite could be mine, they'd say, okay, we've reserved that for you. You get it. I'd be like, you know what? I just may take that deal. I would probably maybe sell that. I don't know. Always on the thing. But here's the point. We're over here to the motorcycles. And I've talked about it a gazillion times on how the Indian product has given me so much fun. It really has. And I've talked a gazillion times about how Indian made me go a different direction and kind of go away from Harley. But that's the, the, the point of the conversation. Once again, it's the fun. You know, what makes that motorcycle fun versus what makes this motorcycle fun? And I've said it so many times. That the, just That's an incredible... To me, more refined motorcycle. This here is such the badass muscle type of bike. It just gives you that that feel that you're on 
like a muscle bike. That this, is in some ways, you did your own type of kind of work. You get more, more like a sense of your. You kind of get more in tune to this bike because you feel like it's just that good old boys, you know, back shop built bike um, that you could have been part of. You know, this bike here, this is just so refined and so well engineered. Now, nah, no, nah, not so much. You know, so the Harley just gives you that good old, the good old, you know, American Harley tradition you know built bike but i know it's china stuff as well no fool to that so you know what makes it fun the exhaust it always resonates back to the exhaust that's that's the most common thing you're going to hear when it comes to ice age the fun factor is does it have you know the noise you know even the way the engine sounds um you know once again it just always resonates back to the exhaust i'll tell you straight up this triumph rocket three here when I'm going down the road at like 60, 70 miles an hour, and I can hear this exhaust gurgling along, um, it's just such the most fun of this motorcycle. And as you give it the throttle, it kicks you back. And when you come off the line and you want to get down going down the road, this thing is so powerful that it gives you that incredibly fun feel of riding this motorcycle because it's just such an exhilarating type of ride. Um, can't have size enough, you know, that this motorcycle, even for me, even though it took close to four years for me to come to closure, that at first I didn't know if I would enjoy the fun long enough, this is an extremely fun motorcycle. I've got other motorcycles in my trailers out here that you don't see, so I really can't talk about them, but we'll stay here on the Honda CB1000R. I've looked at this bike for years. I've always felt like, yeah, right, there's no way you're going to have any fun in this bike. To my amazement, um, it is, but I mean, is this just really a, an hour ride bike? Pretty much. This is maybe a hundred mile ride bike. Um, yeah, ride a hundred miles, get your gas, take a time out and then do another hundred miles. And that, and that's, and that's more than enough. Uh, but you know, the fun factor, what's the fun factor out of it? That's ah, the Honda. It's just me being the guy that loves the Honda products. I have a relationship with Honda. Honda finance gives me anything I want. And, and, you know, and once again, I've got the Honda Gold Wings, are right around the corner from coming into my the dealership I deal with. And, yeah, then, well, then what happens with that, right? I mean, even the point that I bought back, the C CB650R, um, yeah, this is more about the kid than me because the fun factor in that, eh, not so much. The fun factor is I think the CB650 is just a nice motorcycle that will always have a good value. You saw it after. I like the, the looks of it. And I think the kid and I can have some fun chewing upping the different uh, motorcycles. You know, we can both ride the CB series. We're both riding Hondas. You know, that's kind of neat to me. But in all reality, the daughter may be more like, hey, Dad, you know what? I, I'm glad you bought it back, but guess what? I really want to buy this. I want to buy the CB1000R. So now we're both having fun on these two style bikes. I just like kind of more of the uniform look versus, okay, my daughter's now on her Lowrider ST and I'm on the, the Triumph. It isn't a big deal. But I like more of kind of keeping the theme. You know, these are the bagger bikes. These are American-style heritage bikes. And when you ride two up together, it's really cool. We both are kind of on the same style bike. It's even cooler when both of you have the same brand bike because it looks like you're a team, you're a pair. That's the fun factor. And just like you go do your, we do the Mopar show, meaning we go to the car show and we take both the Mopars. Now, we can take both of the Mustangs. We can take three of the Mustangs. Uh, my friend Chris, that uh, is, you know, part of uh, hanging out and riding and driving, and he's driven my Hellcats. He's funny. I told him, hey, we got three Mustangs now. We can go up to the car meet, and we do the three Mustangs, and, and also we do a little back road and ride around after the car meet. He's like, no way. Those Mustangs, I can't get one of those things. I'll break out in hives. <laughs> he's like, I don't like the smell. I think Ford has a unique smell to it over the uh, the GM. He's a, he's a GM guy. He's more of the, of would like to have the Camaro ZL1. I'm like, yeah, I'm with you. Love to have a Camaro ZL1. So, uh, but they're pricey as all get out. But yeah, don't have a relationship with Chevy. So I'm just not there on that product right now. But the whole point is I got a kick out of them saying, yeah, those Mustangs, they got a unique smell to them from the Ford product, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Every manufacturer does have. But you know, it's interesting. These new Ford Mustangs do have a different smell from the previous generation Mustang. What's that all about? Did somebody in the house get, uh, did Chris tell somebody that? Did he tell his friend Herman, who sells um, cars at Ted Britt uh, Ford Chantilly? 
Anybody needs a good car sales guy for the commercial end, look for Herman at Ted Britt Ford and Chantilly. So uh, let's get upstairs here. It's really cold and keep the fun conversations going on sharing more stories of the Inflation Reduction Act, really the Chinese Influence Act, which it really is. Um, you talk about the storm is a brewing and the storm is a coming, coming to do a wrecking. It's getting ready to happen. If you read about what's going on in the car market, and especially the worldwide market, hey puppies, wow, that's a nice change. Warm up here. What do you think there, little baby? My one boy, Scotty boy, seems to be getting better. I think he hurt his front paw. He seems to be getting better, right, though, Ginger baby? Look at that little girl, waiting for daddy, right? Wow, brr, cold, brr. My friend Jake at the Dodge dealer still hasn't hung his, his, his uh, horns up. I was like, hey man, gotta hang your horns up. So, uh, let's phone cradled up here without turning it off. There's nothing simple here, right? It falls, falls down. <laughs> and, uh, woo, wow, I'm freezing. Brr, yeah, yikes. Yeah, yikes, right? So anyways, yeah, the, the world market, Mexico's having a lot of fun right now. It, it's really incredible of what you just, you know, it's all the cause and effect as you get progress in life. You so get how people do things that, you know, it, it's they do this for this, for that. I mean, you just start to put the pieces together. And it's incredible how Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act um, in his eyes, is really a lot of fun. I mean, his city administration, um, the Green Agenda, they truly feel like this Green Agenda is the most fun thing could ever happen in this country. And they brag about it. And what's crazy is all these people are bragging about something that's never even come to be. <laughs> so to me, it's just like, this is like the football team showing up. Have you seen these? Have you seen these? Uh, they're bragging about how they won the game. Before they even won the game. Have you seen this stuff? Have you witnessed this? I mean, we are so witnessing Joe Biden's uh, administration being a football team that showed up and telling everybody how they're going to destroy the other team. And in the end, we've seen this so many times. Yeah. Who's, uh, who's the guys, you know, limping off the field? We know. So the reason I'm bringing this up, as always, is because it's the undermining of our own country through the Chinese communist party and it's a master plan i mean it's beyond believable how this country's sitting politicians which we know so many of them are borderline incompetent how they get into office i don't know i mean sincerely do these people actually have college degrees i mean do they pay for them i mean did they actually were they actually legitimate bar exams for these people who claim to be lawyers did they you know did the artificial intelligence was around before we even knew it and they, that took the test for them? I mean, come on. It's really unbelievable. So the reason I'm really kind of hammering this morning is because I've talked about at great length. This whole battery infrastructure, this whole EV infrastructure is all reliant on the Chinese. All the Chinese. The whole infrastructure, everything, the components, the key ingredients. I talked about it yesterday. The critical elements of the element table for the science class uh, person here that took science. All that stuff is in China. China's got the control of the world dominance of all these products, for the most part. And we need those. So we always have to be reliant on China to create the infrastructure of the electric vehicles that you and I, as taxpayers, are paying Joe Biden's administration to hand out um, to all these people that want to build the infrastructure for the EV um, revolution. But, but, the, but the irony of all this is, is China already, already is moving in. Yes, it's a fact. You can go do your research. Mexico is now becoming one of the biggest importers of China's electric cars. Wow. Do you realize that Mexico is right next to the United States? Do you realize that Mexico and the United States has an agreement of free trade? With no tariffs? Do you, do you, do you know that? <laughs> well, guess what's going on? China is setting up shop in Mexico. They're now starting to sell more cars in Mexico than in, in Russia. Okay, so 
the, the, you just step back and go, all right, so over in Mexico City, Mexico, you're telling me that the Chinese electric cars are starting to grow by leaps and bounds in Mexico. Yes. Yes. Even though they don't even have that great of an infrastructure of uh, the electric build-out grid. But here's the kicker. Here's the fun fact. The individual that lives in Mexico City that goes to the local car dealership and looks at a Chevy or Toyota pickup truck, um, they see the same thing made by China, an electric version, for ten grand less at least. And the vehicle is every bit as good or better than the, than the American-made or Mexico-made Chevy Toyota product. Yeah. So the Mexico, you know, people that live in Mexico are getting very excited that they're able to buy nicer vehicles for very cheap. I mean, who doesn't want to have the fun factor? I mean, come on. You go to the car dealership, and the car's fifty grand. And by the end, you've shown your wife or your friend that it's now forty grand, and you're just like, "Wow, is it, are we having fun, honey? I just beat this car dealership up. We just got the deal of the century. Blah 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 blah. You're having fun. Now we all know. You find out that the person paid fifty five for the car that it could have bought it for fifty every day of his life somewhere else. That person's not having any fun. Whole point is, China is setting up shop as we speak. In Mexico. So I've talked about it at great length. The UAW, the whole infrastructure of Joe Biden's so called um, electric revolution, bring back all the jobs, world dominance of manufacturing. It, it, it's, it's like I just told you it's the football team that shows up, starts telling everybody how badass they are, and they're going to kick the other team's ass, and other guys that get just, you know, walloped. And they're limping off the field, look like the biggest dumbasses in the world. This is what we're getting ready to witness. We're getting ready to witness this whole Inflation Reduction Act, which is the Chinese Influence Act. That's my whole point. Chinese are playing right along with this thing to a T. They're going, look at this here. The Americans are going to build out a whole electric vehicle infrastructure for us to circumvent. We love these people. These people are stupid people. I mean, I can guarantee you, behind the scenes, Chinese like this guy Joe Biden's convincing all the taxpayers to build out the whole electrical grid. For our future of all of our cars. Isn't this guy great? We love this guy. Because we're going to be right next door in Mexico building all the cars that are substantially cheaper than what those Americans. You can just hear them laughing. Oh, you think the American guys would go to work for 30 grand a year? <laughs> we people in Mexico. I mean, it's beyond believable. Yeah, yeah. No, the American worker makes $100,000 a year. They're going to be laughing, laughing. That's what's getting ready to play out in front of our eyes. Wow. And Joe Manchin, where the heck is that guy that was the last guy to be forced to sign the damn Inflation Reduction Act? And so here's the next thing. All of a sudden, the car manufacturers are really revving it up against this administration that rewrote the laws of what qualifies you to get a tax incentive on your electric car. From getting full tax incentive to maybe a little bit of a tax incentive or no tax incentive, you know, the, the thing is you buy a Ford F-150 Lightning truck, it's a $7,500 tax, tax credit for you to, to use on your tax returns for your whatever year you bought the vehicle. Well, they rewrote the laws that say that if a vehicle's components aren't a majority of North American um, components, meaning Mexico, and North America, United States, Canada, whatever it may be, um, then you don't qualify for that tax credit. Yeah, and so that's put a big stink um, into the likes of Tesla and other manufacturers on how they rewrote the laws. Well, all of a sudden now, uh, the Biden administration is now starting to retreat from that and are thinking, well, maybe this isn't such a great idea because there's a lot of EV vehicles sitting in the market right now. Maybe we need to give back and just say, well, whatever. It doesn't matter what origin the car came from. Just Give everybody the big tax rebate just to get these cars on the roads and get things going. Yes, that is ongoing negotiations as I sit here and tell you this morning before the year's out if they reverse what they initially put into place because they're seeing how people are pulling back. But are people pulling back because of that? Um, you know, I think it goes back to the fun factor. I think people weigh the fun of the electric vehicle of, yeah, I mean, it's the cars are cool, they're neat. 
But then at the same time, I think they think, yeah, but do I have the capability to charge my car? Um, if I want to go on a road trip to see my mother in an emergency situation that's 800 miles away, you know, will I be able to do that within, you know, a, a day's time? Will I take two or three days? I mean, so that's what starts, I think, you know, starts the fun factor, starts going, you know, up, up, up. Um, is the car going to have, you know, for me at my house, I'm going to have to spend X amount of dollars to get electric put in to make it so I can actually charge it overnight instead of waiting a week for it to charge. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But going back to China, I think that China is having fun at our expense. And China's had fun at our expense for so many years. It was, in my eyes, it was Bill Clinton that opened the whole um, fun factor for China. I talked about that yesterday in these critical um, well, minerals about how China set up in the 90s. China, back in the 90s, Early 2000, the China Communist Party uh, did the exact same thing Joe Biden's doing. They offered huge sums of monies for com for individuals to set up shop in China to start manufacturing. Joe Biden took that exact same business model to try to put that here in our country. But I think in the end, that business model is only going to re reward China in the end. It's not going to reward us. I just can't see it. I'm sorry. I cannot see. Can anybody honestly see where we live in this, today's society, that the younger generation wants to be sitting on an assembly line that doesn't make great money? Um, does anyone want to see the, the, the major mining operations that have to be created for all the minerals? I don't even know if we even have all the minerals. Um, you know, But here's the thing. The, the infrastructure of batteries changes. So I'm no fool to, for anybody to watch my channel that I'll say, yeah, is the sodium ion? Yeah, did you hear that? Sodium ion? Well, what's that? That's salt. That's an ingredient now being put into the manufacturing of batteries. And the future of these battery cells may be, um, it may be significant enough to get rid of the lithium, but these won't be like long-range batteries. But the whole prediction is there's going to be so many electrical charging stations everywhere. But where is the power coming for all this stuff? I mean, sincerely, I talked about that before, that, they're talking about the big rig trucks. That they're saying that you get a bunch of big rig trucks that have to repower themselves. A city of 150,000 people, the lights will go out. It just is so. It's the the blind leading the blind. Yeah, where's the fun, right? Where's the fun? And once again, doesn't it seem like we, as usual, as the taxpayers of our country, witness these political powers to be that have fun at your expense? I mean, what's I mean. At the end of the day, if this all goes kaput, doesn't play out the way it should have, I mean, really, what's going to happen? It's just, you know, throw another, what, trillion, what's the trillions of dollars in debt? And, you know, it's incredible. Think about the fun factor of this. This guy, Mike Johnson, came into office. He was able to do a two-partisan bill from the government shutdown, and now we're going into the January 17th or 18th. Um, where's all the fun talk? That guy just, like, disappeared. But I don't get on... I just don't watch the news. I mean, I turned on my TV as TV downstairs yesterday because I like to watch YouTube videos of, and see what's going on out there with other people. The, the doom and gloom, the doom and gloom. That's all that populates. It's just one car guy after another saying the fun is over. The fun is over. And I just, you know, so I kind of change the subject here real quick is, yeah, think this through. The car dealership industry, the motorcycle dealer industry, the boat industry, the RV industry, those people had the most fun ever in their lifetime during the pandemic. Isn't it incredible a pandemic that for so many were so hurt? So many, you know, I lost, um, I know of people who died from the COVID and other things. Um, it was a terrible time. And so many got destroyed, but the car dealerships, the motorcycle dealerships, the RV, these guys had the most fun in their lifetime because they were selling cars and things like you couldn't believe and incredible profits never seen. And there's and that's the thing. The fun is over for these dealerships. I mean, I'm around them, I witness them because the heyday of these huge profit margins and sell every car that shows up, it's over. So the fun days. For the whole automotive industry, truly, the fun, it's like going to the party and you're having a blast.
But you know as well as I do, you got to eventually leave the party because you got to go back to reality of going home and getting some sleep and going to work or whatever it may be. So the fun is over. So I guess the message today is, yeah, I guess the fun is over, is it? I mean, I think so for a lot of the industry. I just see it. But let's not harbor on that. Let's harbor on, let's have more fun, right? What's the fun factor to be for me today? Yeah, do I go buy that Nissan Z? <laughs> uh, that's really a car I wanted. In all reality, if I would have gotten that car instead of the Dark Horse Mustang, I'd have been like, I'd have been actually very, I'd probably been like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, but it just can't, I can't get the fun out of these financial institutions that think that I'm having fun at their expense because they think I'm a Toro guy. Isn't that the truth? These financial institutions, oh, this guy, this guy's funny. This guy's funny. Look at all his cars. Look at all these cars this guy has. This guy's funny. This guy's just doing Toro. This, this guy can't. How could this guy possibly have all these cars? What does he do with them? There's no way. Yeah, all right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. Do I hit 10K today? Do I? In fact, right now, I'm going to look at my account. And that'd be funny if 99.99. Here <laughs> it is. I'm in Chevrolet, buddy. Just so you can I don't know if you can see that or not. So there it is. 99.99 subscribers. So the $10, $10 ain't going out yet. Anybody, so you can't email me, I guess, until tomorrow. You know, I mean, because the 10,000 hasn't hit. So tomorrow morning, if I have 10,000 hits, and I announce that, and you're one of the first out of 10 people to email me that ICHTV comments at Gmail that you want to stick in your $10 bill or $10 gift card, whatever you think is smarter to do, um, there you go. So you got you got to wait on our day. I can't believe it. I can't believe. I was so much fun to have fun this morning on that. <laughs> that see you know some people are like you're just bribing us now yeah what youtube channel out there mcfarlane what's that guy that one guy that has a huge channel that's always selling all the car wash and soap products and you enter a contest to win something i mean i get it it's creative i think it's a great idea in all reality i mean wow all right everybody hey thanks for watching my channel appreciate all the support and what plays out next ah who the heck knows it's freezing butt that's all I know. It's cold. I got to go do a job. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, stay tuned for more. Have a great day. God bless.